So let's go ahead and look at this next clip by Bernie Sanders, which kind of plays right into this. Let's take another question from our audience. Martha Readyoff is a teacher from New Milford, Connecticut. Martha, welcome. Good evening. Human population growth has more than doubled in the past 50 years. The planet cannot sustain this growth. I realize this is a poisonous topic for politicians, but it's crucial to face. Empowering women and educating everyone on the need to curb population growth seems a reasonable campaign to enact. Would you be courageous enough to discuss this issue and make it a key feature of a plan to address climate catastrophe? Well, Martha, the answer is yes. <laughs> and the answer has everything to do with the fact that women in the United States of America, by the way, have a right to control their own bodies and make reproductive decisions. And the Mexico City Agreement, which denies American aid to those organizations around the world that, are, uh, that allow women to have abortions or even get involved uh, in birth control, to me is totally absurd. So I think, especially in poor countries around the world, uh, where women do not necessarily want to have large numbers of babies, and where they can have the opportunity through birth control to control the number of kids they have, something I very, very strongly uh, support. Uh, I want to... Uh... All right, so... First of all, I would like to congratulate CNN on getting John Lennon to ask that question. Where did they find her? She, she does look like John Lennon. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know, without the facial hair, of course. But uh, Bernie Sanders just buys wholesale into this. And uh, actually, um, looks almost like Janet Joplin or... But, Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll get off that. Uh, apparently, Bernie Sanders' plan to save the world is the same plan that Thanos had to save the universe. If we just wipe out half the population, <laughs> if we just snap them right out of existence, then <laughs> we're going to be fine. Which, granted, Bernie is, is not quite as the uh, imposing physical specimen that Thanos is, but he does sit in a chair an awful lot, so maybe there is a connection there. I don't know. Uh, evidently that seems to be Bernie's plan. But the reason this is such a load of garbage, Malthusian economics, which is what this is essentially based on, was disproven in the 1700s. So for those of you who don't know, the first person that came up with this maximum population that eventually the population would be too great, it would be too great a load for the earth to sustain based on the resources that we have was a guy named Thomas Malthus. And he came up with this theory that I believe it was by the year 1790, the population would exceed where the resources would be able to actually keep up with them. But the thing that he didn't count on is human ingenuity because by the numbers, Malthus was right. But he did not factor in mankind's ability to adapt to a new environment or a new challenge and to be able to overcome it through technology. And so for, you know, 300 years now, closer to 200 years actually, but uh, for at, at the very least 240 years now, we have been living in a time that disproves everything that Malthus believed in, that eventually there were not going to be enough resources to sustain the level of population that we have. And right now, the reason that this is so crazy, we are actually living at below replacement levels. The United States birth rate is slightly below two, and since it takes two to tango, you don't exactly have to be a math expert to realize that our population is on par to shrink not increase, because we're replacing ourselves at about 1.9, which means that we're not getting over that two mark. So our population, at least the population in America, isn't growing. And what's amazing to me is Bernie Sanders, for all the talk about Donald Trump being a Nazi, Bernie Sanders just made a Nazi argument. Not saying that Bernie Sanders is a Nazi, don't take me out of context, but I'm saying this is the same argument that the Nazis used for why they had to get rid of certain parts of the population. Because it started with 
disabled people and old people. And then later on, as time progressed, it moved to other groups like Jews, like capitalists, like the gypsies, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through every one of them because I think there's about, what, 13 or 14 groups. But anyway, that expanded because they said, we just don't have enough resources. We, we can't possibly do this. Humankind, when the population grows, that means there is a larger pool of ideas and more people that are willing to work on problems to solve those issues of resource shortages. If anything, we should be doing the best that we can to increase the population because we've been doing it since the 1790s and it's worked out pretty darn good. Look where humankind was then and look at where we are here. We were pooping outside and reading by candlelight. Now we're living in the world that we are now, despite the fact that economists back then were saying the sky is falling and Earth is going to see a massive extinction level event in starvation because we will not be able to sustain it. That was disproven more than a hundred years ago. And what's amazing to me is this woman asking the question, is a teacher who apparently is in charge of teaching children this and still believes this disproven theory, that ought to scare the pants off of people. And it's a glowing testament to why the public school system is not what it once was. But he's making that same argument that the Nazis did. That, well, we've just got to kill people. We've got too many people, we don't have enough resources, let's just kill them, and then there won't be the people. And what he's specifically doing when he's talking about people in uh, South America, uh, Central America, he's talking about doing it to poor people. That's what's so astounding here. He's, I guess his logic is basically, well, if we, if we kill the poor people, there will, be no, there will be no income inequality because we will have no poor people, they will be dead. That's essentially what Bernie Sanders is saying. You just kill off the poor people, and then you don't have poor people to worry about. Now, that never works, because again, the Nazis actually tried it. They said that, oh, well, these, these interlopers in our country, the gypsies, the, uh, uh, the Roma, the, uh, the Jews, everybody else, they're a drain on society because they're using up all of our resources that rightfully belong to us. So what we've got to do is we've got to kill them off so that they're not using those resources anymore. And it didn't work. In fact, Nazi, uh, Nazi Germany was starving by the time that the Americans broke through in the Battle of the Bulge. Their resources were abysmal. I've talked to people that lived through that time in Germany. And we're talking about how they would literally have gangs of kids roaming around the streets of Berlin, rooting through trash to find something to eat because they only got half a loaf of bread every day. Killing off massive portions of their population to try to sustain and try to save all the resources for themselves was a abysmal disaster. And the same thing will happen if we implement Bernie's plan. You can call it abortion if you want to, but it's still a genocide and it's still specifically targeting the poorest people. And this is Bernie's brilliant new strategy that's never been tried before. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.